Hi everyone, got a real treat for you today. It's been a little while um, since I was in conversation with Janet Trelaw and Hazel Newton, my, my beautiful friends, beautiful selves that they are. We've known each other for many years and my life has been immensely enriched by their friendship, um, their channeling, their, their spiritual guidance along the way. And it's just such a joy to be back with them again. And uh, so particularly Janet and Zach, um, we've missed you. So great to have you moving back on track again. So. And for those of you who haven't listened to Janet, Zach, Hazel before, um, Janet and Hazel are both past life regressionists. In fact, they used to train people how to do past life regression. They're no longer doing client work because they're spending all of their time focused on the Patreon group. And their Patreon group is, is wonderful. Um, there is a, certainly a, a Zach deep dive every month with great wisdom in it. Um, a beautiful meditation that Zach does. He's a, a, a brilliant DJ with the music, I have to say as well. Um, it's a real community where you can ask questions that are answered by Zach on, on the videos as well. There's so much, it's, it's amazing value. And we'll also post, um, not only the, the detailed background of Hazel and Janet below this video, but also there's a specific um, meditation called turnaround toxicity, because many people are struggling with their health and dealing with the solar flare activity at the moment. So we'll post that below as well, because people will find that very helpful, I think. So, so welcome, Hazel. Welcome, Janet. Welcome, Zach. Almost. I know he's going to be arriving any moment. So, uh, can't wait. There's so much I'd like to talk about in this and ask ask of Zach. But Hazel, I think normally you're you're the one who asks the wonderful questions. So, but I think this time around it's going to be down to me. Thank you so much, Pam. We're deeply honoured to be back. We so enjoyed the last three conversations that you've had with Zach because you really bring out some deep, deep wisdom using the questions that you have because you know which questions to ask really I think it's most important that we hand over to you Jan and hear a little bit about you before you bring Zach through. Thank you Hazel and thank you Pam for having us back um, it's been a very very turbulent two nearly three years won't go into all of that here no time for that but just to say it is wonderful to be able to still bring through this wisdom really from Zach and this different perspective. Um, we're going through so much, all of us, as we know. And so I think to be able to hear from maybe like an eagle's perch and also be able to feel what we're going through as a collective. Um, Zach is very good at being able to perceive what's coming up and then give us practical advice as well. So Whatever he can share with everybody today, I'm delighted to be able to be the vehicle to allow that to happen. Fabulous. Can't wait. Lots of ground to cover. <laughs> yeah. Shall you, I get out of the way? Yes, you get out of the way. And as you do, perhaps I could just explain just very, very briefly that Zach is an aspect of the Ascended Master Dwarkul, for those of you that haven't heard him before. Um, but he's come through in one of his lives as Zachariah, who lived in Syria, because he is such a lover of humanity and such a lover of life. And his wonderful energy is so warm and loving and humorous. So I hope that sets the scene for you. I will retreat while you choose. Thank choose. you, Hazel. Bye for now, Pam. Bye. back together again <laughs> Zach it is such it's so magical to be with you again I I can't wait for our conversation so bless you wonderful to be with you pleasure 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 where to begin with such a broad topic but you know you have the questions so yes begin whenever you would like to start okay many many questions many um areas I'd love to cover a couple of years ago, you said that um, our birth charts are etched in our hearts. You, you, those were your words. Could you describe that, please, a little more fully? Is that is that simply energetic? Is it in any way literal? Could you explain a little more about what you meant by that? It sounds like a metaphor, does it not? It sounds very poetic, but it is actually literal. 
which branches did you are made from? Uh, of course, on the etheric and the etheric body uh, that comes down in the different frequencies to the density of the physical. Now we know through your modern sciences, how the physical body is created, how there is a geometry, uh, shapes within the cells and so forth. Regarding the position of the person in regard to the connection with their soul and their relationship to the world and the environment around them, this is, as you say, etched within the heart. This is a different type of geometry. This is an energetic geometry that is more like you could imagine a uh, mechanical. If you imagine like a child's mechanical toy with cogs, a bit like a clock, you know, things that have moving parts. Throughout the life, the geometry moves. It changes its shape and its state. In so doing, it allows the birth chart to emerge, to move forward, like in your linear time. If you simply put, a, a, you know, wrote everything down and placed it there, the body, the soul, the energy would not know when to react to different things. By having it placed uh, in a significant format that the energy inside the heart can read, as this mechanism moves forward every day, breathing, breathing, the heart pumping. You know, the heart does not work in days and months and years. It works in heart beats. So you can think of the millions and millions of heart beats in a person's life. And to each of the heart beats, this geometry is moving and it is moving through the birth chart so that the activations, so for yourself, if for Pamela, when you're looking like at a person's birth chart and you may say there's a significant thing around the age of 24, 44, uh, 78, whatever, this is how it is actually activated. It is because it is set in a type of shape that is consistent, that the physical body can react to, but is in an energetic state that is far closer to the emotional body but has this connection, not only with the soul, but with the whole uh, star system, the whole universe, because of course you are holographic. It is all within you. Does this make sense to you, my dear? Or Absolutely. So the heart, the heart connects us to the cosmos, essentially. Absolutely. So I have always said the universe exists within your heart, the entirety of the universe. I'm not talking about just your cuboid of the universe that the earth and the solar system sits within. I am talking of the entirety, all the realms, all the dimensions, all the frequencies. Now, in human form of physicality, you can think, how can that be? My heart is a tiny little thing. <laughs> but of course, this is not about space. This is not about the physicality. The existence of the universe has its own geometric pattern. And there is a micro and a macro. And the micro is also encoded in every single heart. So that is not just humans. Every living thing that has a heart is uh, has a birth chart, as it were, maybe slightly different in different species. And this is in relation because the universe exists within it. And the universe cannot just pop off another entity you know you cannot just be born and just be loud free in the universe you are part of the universe and then the universe looks after its own by residing in the heart but then also applying its laws its strategies its movements and its indication of potential futures within this is why these three two things are so tied together the universe cannot change and have the person stay the same but it's also vice versa. This is the yeah. very important point. As the person change, the universe changes too. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> because that's huge. Because that really says, as we elevate our consciousness, our reality changes very significantly. Exactly. And this is something that uh, really now we are in uh, uh, the year of the 2024. Now that we have moved, all the things that you have been talking about different. Everything that you have been talking about, we can now really get to the heart 
literally of this. The truth that is, every choice, every decision, every movement, even if it is tiny, it has an impact on the universe. This is why it is so important now that as people develop the lives that they truly want to live, as they are helping themselves, they are helping the universe. But the universe is also putting in the work. The universe is bringing different shifts and changes to the earth, to the cosmos, to the planetary changes in order to make this be possible for people to do this. Understand, yes. Yes, absolutely. So that is very much that this is this is wonderful, Zach. So this is very much suggesting that our realities truly are completely individual, depending on our, our consciousness and the geometry in our hearts. Absolutely. There is a thought process, you know, that people are like a number, that they are robotic, that they are AI. This is not true. It is sometimes easier when there are billions of people on the earth to think in such a way or to think of people in, you know, sort of those people are like this or those people are like that. No, every single person, every single person, you could say the universe in their own right. Because every single person, whether they are one year old or a hundred year old, are shifting the changes within the uh, vicinity around their own reality, but they are shifting the environment around them. And then you could think of that like a ripple effect all the way out until it includes the universe. What is happening on Earth is reflected in other parts of your universe. So it is not like, well, this is this one planet and as much as we love it, it doesn't really matter what happens to it. It does matter because it has influence. Earth has a great influence. Just like, you know, um, if you walk into a room and there's a lot of people that are sitting around quite happy, but you've got one very, very agitated person. Everybody notices them, do they not? Because of the energy they give off. Earth is like the agitated person to the universe. <laughs> and what I mean by this is there's so much influx. There's so much movement. There's so much with the magnetic force. There is so much with the, the rays and others that are uh, coming in at this time. Yeah. That it is so important because nature and the earth can do a certain amount. But because there are so many people, so many agitated forms on the planet, which are then predicting the shifts and changes of the earth. This is why it is so important what they do. It is what they do. It is their reality and their reality that they can uh, create, which is the most important thing, which will mean whether it is a smooth and comfortable movement into uh, the future, or if it is a juddery and difficult, you know, like a car that will not start, you know, whether it is a smooth run or whether you have to work at it, work at it. And so uh, I do not want this to sound like waggy finger, you know, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. It is about being mindful and it is about acknowledgement. When we say there's a god and goddess within everyone, we are not just flattering people. We're not saying, oh, you're a god and goddess. No, what we are saying is be aware that you are shifting and changing the universe with every single thing that you think, act and do. <laughs> no minor feat, is it not, my dear friend? Oh, fabulous. So is it the case, therefore, Zach, that the more coherent we can be in our individual emotions of joy, peace, compassion, gratitude, the smoother ride, the smoother individual ride we will have through this period of evolution? It is, but it is also acknowledging that your environment informs you. So yeah. whether your environment involves other people that are having a difficult time or whether your environment involves uh, uh, certain levels of toxicity. We will simply call it that word in whatever it is. Yes, it means that sometimes decisions and choices and ease uh, can be a little bit more complicated, but also there will be times that the coherence level would allow you to dip into this. And this is a, a no bad thing because it is natural. It is a natural state of affairs and it is part of being an emotional, human magical being it's natural to be emotional what is the purpose now is to be aware and to say come on now 
this is my choice. Now that I've dipped, where am I going? Yeah. Do I tumble further or do I set, you know, steady myself for a little while and then allow myself to move back up? But knowing, sometimes when you're doing it for yourself, it can be quite tricky. But when you are doing it for others and the others that you love, even if you think, well, my loved ones are on the other side of the world, they do not even know these decisions I'm making. But if you're thinking, but actually, if I come into this, ultimately, uh, uh, on the domino effect, I am affecting them. And this can be a good way to motivate yourself. When motivating for self can be a tricky thing. This is a fundamental issue with human beings. They yeah. ultimately are far more likely to do good when they know it is helping somebody else than when it is actually just for themselves, yeah. even though this uh, sounds a bit strange. Understand it? Yes, absolutely. And and our conversation here, Zach, is coming at a very relevant time because we are literally within hours of, of going into, over this weekend, uh, five coronal mass ejections, have been, which have already been thrown from the sun. Um, I've lost track of the number of M-class flares. I think we've had into the, well into the teens in the last 48 hours. We've had five X-class flares with a very high probability, 75% probability of more this weekend as well. So we are moving into a very different electromagnetic environment because it's the peak of solar cycle 24, but also, as I understand it, because there's a drop in the Earth's magnetic um, shield, plus we're moving through the photon belt, that is allowing us to absorb these energies in a bigger way than we've ever experienced. So can you talk a little bit about this shift, this change in the, this, this upping in, in, the, in the electromagnetism, how that's affecting the earth as an electromagnetic being, how it's affecting us as individuals as electromagnetic beings and the evolutionary purpose uh, perhaps of the solar flares and the photonic light, because as I understand it, they're different. Each of those yeah. are different as, as a purpose. Mm. So this comes at a very important time. The majority, the tipping point has happened. People talk about the tipping point. And what do we mean of tipping point? And what I'm talking of here of the tipping point is the tipping point of desire. It is the tipping point. There is enough people now living, breathing, and uh, decision-making on planet Earth who truly desire betterment. Yeah. Now, before that sounds like a throwaway statement, you think, well, everybody does. Really think about it. A lot of people are very happy just to get to the status quo, where a lot of people get used to and comfortable with pain, suffering, blah, blah, blah. Now, this desire is in the heart. To refer back to what you were talking about right at the beginning, the universe is in the heart. The birth chart is in the heart. And of course, whatever is in your heart can be read, therefore, by the universe. We will just use that blanket term for now. Okay? So therefore, if this state of being with the, uh, the flares, the blah, 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 everything else happening, if the tipping point had not been reached, this would become a lot more uncomfortable. Because if you think, well, it's a bit like being heading out on a journey, but you don't really want to go. Your bags are not packed. However, here, people are really ready for a change. May not be conscious, may not be in the noodle, but in their heart, they are knowing that the status quo cannot stay the same. And they are aware, because certainly, you know, recent years in particular have been very, very difficult for the majority of the people on this precious planet of yours. Therefore, they have a level of strength within their hearts. And because it is in the birth chart of everybody, everybody that is living at this time who is going to go through such a big change over these years, this is etched within there. No one came here and said, oh, we won't tell them. Everybody knew on an energetic level. Therefore, they are prepared for this part. However, it can feel as if you're not prepared because this influx of energy is so bombarding to the planet. Yeah. It is bombarding not only in weather systems, very strange events, strange, uh, almost miraculous events that people say, oh, we have not seen this. We've seen it in biblical times, blah, blah, blah. Because it is, it 
affecting dramatic change. And particularly within people, I remember that I said this energy within the heart is most closely linked with emotional, it will bring up very strong emotional states of being. And coupled with that very likely strong physical sensations. Now the physical sensations could be a development and amplification of sensations that people already have. If they have pain in certain areas, it could be worse. Whatever it may be, whatever their, uh, uh, their weakness in their body may be stronger. Uh, so first of all, very, very practical, look after self. Be very, very aware to do all the good, useful, uh, sometimes people say not very interesting, but useful things to keep yourself as well as you can through this. And the nervous system is the thing that it comes through. And as we know, uh, many people have got impaired nervous systems for many, many different reasons at this time. And therefore the nervous system really takes the brunt because it is the nervous system that is the transference of communication of these things that are happening further out in the solar system into the body. So it is a case of writing it out. There are many things we could do, but think of it as being plugged in for a journey. Uh, think of it as if you are, you know, you need the fuel in to be able, and it takes a lot what you are being talked up. So in one way, you can welcome in, even when it is uncomfortable, you can say, but this is good because I am receiving. If I'm receiving, other people are receiving. The earth is receiving energy, which is going to power it to change. Now that change, could be a promotion of healing. It could be a promotion of, um, uh, uh, what is word, what is word, uh, decomposition, you know, speed up decomposition of things that need to go. It could be a speeding up of a, a transmutation from a, a toxic environment to a healthy environment, whatever it may be, but there is definitely speed involved. Ultimately though, this is all for the betterment. So aligning with the earth, which naturally will ground into these new energies far quicker than any person could, because it is a larger mass, it is denser than the physical body. The physical body has so much water in it. This will be a bit like when you think of, a, you know, a putting electric cable into a lot of water, it flies through it, whereas into the earth, it will ground it. So by moving more into the state of being of connecting with the earth. Now, if you are a, a city dweller and you do not uh, really feel that connected with nature, this is not about suddenly having to go out and you know get into the land, You're just plants, uh, nearby trees, uh, any air, any access to nature to allow the energy of the earth to stabilize what you are feeling. And the magnetic field, as you say, there is a, a physics of laws why this is actually happening. But predominantly, you could say the intelligence behind it is the magnetic field is lowering to allow this application of the electric force and everything else to come in to then stimulate it to then be able to, uh, what is the word, position, position itself in another layer of, shall we call it, improvement for the earth and for people. And you naturally have a magnetic force within you and it naturally will align. But again, if you can do it through the heart because that will be the quickest, simplest and easiest way to be able to stabilize. And just know, you know, there is a long period of time. It is a number of weeks we will be going through this but just know that this is actually an ability so that everything else afterwards can speed up. Everything else can be, uh, you know, things that you have been feeling, been going on and on and on for years, can actually get solved just like that. Understand, yes, I don't much. Yeah, 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 so, so this will result in an upgrade of our psychic sensitivities, of telepathy, of healing, of, of becoming, stepping into being a new human in a way. Absolutely. And Okay, so so it's interesting. You and and you think this will last a period of weeks, Zach, rather than years. I mean, I'm certainly seeing it as weeks or months rather than um, years and years. 
the potential at this very moment that we are talking now is around seven weeks from wow. this moment now for the uh, greatest capacity of the exchange and the change to be happening. We will see the uh, uh, echoes of everything going on for a long time after, but it is a seven, seven week period of holding onto your hat, you know, wow. making sure that you are being very, very mindful of looking after yourself. Now that does not mean to say you've got to suddenly become very pious and, and very, very saintly for seven weeks. This is very hard for most humans to do, but it is just being mindful that if you do anything, feel anything, that is bringing what you feel your natural energy down, just be mindful the next day to pick yourself up because this is the best way to go through it. And also it is so, so important at this time, the purity of your water, yeah. okay? And when I talk about the purity, I'm talking of the energy, the intention of the water. So it is not about, uh, it has to be filtered to a specific grid, da, 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 da. This is all useful. Uh, you can allow your water to stand things that I know that you have spoken of different Pamela, um, different things uh, where you can encode it and so forth. But the main thing just for everybody is to intend that this water is already of the higher vibration because what is a quicker, easier way to be able to move through this than just by drinking it, ingesting it. It is the easiest way, is it not? The water, will be the first thing, as I say, like electrical charge, it is the first thing on the planet that will pick up the higher vibration. So you can allow the higher vibration, for want of a better word, it is a, it is a, do not hold me to those words, higher vibration, because they are used in many different ways, but a, of a, a different new aspect coming in. The water will take it on. Nature does not quibble and does not resist, it just does. So have good, good wholesome water, but then also intend as well that you are taking in and that your body will metamorphosize with the water, that it will allow the structure within to change with the structure of the water. And you will be surprised how quickly that can happen. Even though your bodies are predominantly water, in the exchange that you have every single day, your water, just like your blood, actually exchanges even you know, the water and all the cells, and you could think, well, actually, a lot of my body is probably quite stagnant. It is not true. The water exchange is very rapid. Many people will feel, they will actually be going, you know, sort of, they will flush out. They will feel like, oh my goodness, I'm drinking lots of water and lots of water is coming out. And this is because the water energy knows it is flushing out the stale. It is flushing out the vibration that was from before to make way. And again, this is to do with the magnetic force. And because your body communicates on a physical way in an electro, uh, well, electromagnetic, but if you can think of it like an electric appliance, all the communication between the cells have electricity capacity. And therefore with the flow of the higher vibration water coming in, again, it will stabilize this new energy so much better. So I hope that I'm bringing through some uh, uh, practical applications for what you will be experiencing as well, because it does sound a little bit like a, a, a sci-fi, does it not? <laughs> no, it's it's wonderful, Zach, because, you know, as you know, I have such an interest in water, but the way you're speaking, it sounds like the water is primary because the impetus for a restructuring is coming from the water. So if, if I can ask this big question, is water divine intelligence is water god consciousness is water primary that that is instructing us to upgrade essentially the best way to describe it is water is of a higher realm frequency on your planet than anything else the wow. reason being all the influxes all the energy we have been speaking of the last few years and before when it comes in it does change as we say denser you know rock stone all the rest of it, even the nature, the trees and the plants that go through, they are growing out of that. But they are influenced. They all live by water. Yeah. So you could think of it as this is the divine influence that changes the water. If you look into the oceans and particularly the latest species that are being discovered, all of the species, the deep, deep water 
new species being discovered on the ocean have very, very high levels of intelligence. Where did that come from? It is because the water that they are immersed in has awoken different aspects of them. Their evolution has quickened through these things. Now, we could get into all of the topics of what does that mean about fishery, blah, 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 blah. Ultimately, though, however, if we think that every single water course around the world, whether it be an ocean, a lake, a river, a stream, a pond, is all getting the same level of energy, and uh, the moon is very, very uh, instructive in this, because the moon every night, wherever you are in the world when your night comes, is a cleansing force. So as the energy has come in, what the moon does is doing exactly the same as I'm asking for people to do when they are flushing through the body. It is allowing levels of toxic toxicity, whether it is a physical toxicity or more of an energetic uh, toxicity, because of course this water has gone through a lot of people as well already, to be then left and gone. So that, as you can say, the divinity of it, and what we mean by that is the higher level consciousness for betterment is just there waiting, just there waiting. So even at this time, even if you are taking baths, you know, even if you are going to your local swimming pool, um, even you might think, well, but there's chemicals in there, but it's still water. When you are in water, best time to do a meditation at this time. Because you will be immersed in energy which will naturally be in the moment. It will not be living in the past or the future. It is in the moment. So the more that we can have water. Now, we do not want a water shortage around the world after we are talking like this. But just to really be able to uh, not just think of a water like, oh, that's just another glass of water. But to actually really feel the evidence of what is in it and what you're ingesting, even what you are giving to your plants. You may find your plants start evolving in certain ways when you are watering your garden, uh, the rain that is coming down in the garden and so forth, uh, in agriculture and other. Now, there are going to be fluctuations, of course, while all of this is changing, but the structure of it is becoming so much more known within the body and within people. So if we can trust in the water, we can give ourselves another tool to have divine magnificence coming into us every glass of water that we drink good eh? absolutely and the more coherent we are in our emotion you know love joy etc the more we can help to structure the water in a coherent way so so big question zach and i'm gonna be on tender hooks hearing your answer if we look at open water seas oceans lakes rivers is that water receiving the imprint of the prevailing planetary pattern at the time? And as we ingest the water, that is interacting with our original birth chart blueprint. Is that a physical explanation of how astrology may work? Yes. Wow! <laughs> exactly. exactly. Wow, that was just a thought I had. That's so exciting. See? See what we can divulge now? <laughs> how you can see this thing? That's so exciting. You have no idea how excited that makes me. See, this is very good. And so <laughs> you can imagine, when you're thinking of the blueprint, uh, to put in layman's terms for many of the people that are listening, uh, maybe they are coming up to something that their heart, you know, the cogs, the mechanisms are moving through. They are making their choices. However, this thing is coming up. And uh, at the moment, they are not in their right lane for a certain event, something that is going to be useful for them to come through. But then the divine intervention, because every single person on the planet, young, old, rich, poor, doesn't matter about culture, ethnicity, diversity, every single person needs water. So the water is coming in as well and is informing the astrology. So even if they are resisting what is going on thousands of miles away from a certain planet, they can't get away from it because through the bodies of water, this is where the movement, if you think of like the transit of Venus, people have taken that in through the water that they are drinking. 
You understand? Yeah, absolutely. That's what that's what I theorized. And it's so exciting. You said yes. So exciting. So is it therefore, Zach, that water is the superconductor of information on the galactic superhighways, if you like, from the individual to receiving information you know, far, far galaxy? Is it the water that is doing that instantaneously for us? Yes. There is no way that your planet could not be predominantly water when you have evolved into being land beings. Yes, you might travel on the water, but you have evolved to live on the land. And this is to help clear and keep clear huge bodies of water so that information that is coming from thousands upon thousands of miles away has a conductor that is there and ready, and then a vehicle to get into everybody, and not only every person. Think water is needed for every plant, yeah. every tree, every animal. Think of an animal that does not need water. So therefore, this information superhighway has been very, very cleverly designed so that everything on your planet even though it is not in water, will receive information within the space of around three days from coming in. So you think, zoom, bang, into the water. Within three days, just because water, again, just like the cells of your body, you know, you may have a cell in your brain and a cell in your foot, but it communicates because you are holographic and everything communicates as one. It is the same. It comes into a big body of water. And even if you are not ingesting that exact, it has spoken, let us simply say, to every other a droplet of water on the planet. So within three days, and we all know the magical uh -huh, uh, simulation of the number three. The number three is the three of completion. So from the start to the completion in the body. So whatever you are doing, whoever you are, whatever you are feeling, you are getting uh, within the matrix field of what is coming in so that everything can evolve together. When we look and we think with human minds, well, this is evolving and that is not because we are seeing from the dense physical from the outside but actually everybody is being given exactly the same information, the same chance yeah. to run with it, to be able to respond. And you're seeing this in certain species and others. Uh, things, species where thought would never ever thrive are thriving again. New, so many new uh, species of insects that have not been discovered yet, taking the place of all the ones that have died out. These are evolved insects. Because nature will simply run with the information and make good, make best of it. Humans are still dilly-dallying around a little bit, but they are getting there. But everything else is working together. Now, this sounds like a paradise in Eden. We know that it is not quite that way. But when we break it down to that, when we say, actually, it's something that comes in, every single person, every single species, everything that is living, breathing, every sentient being on the planet and the earth itself within three days is on the same playing field once again. It can be a very uh, 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 coming together. You can feel the collective force and you can feel you are part of something rather than struggling in the mire on your own. Understand? Yes. Absolutely. So this is the highest divine intelligence in water operating as an evolutionary agent for every living being slug snail moss tree you me perfect well this is beyond exciting i'm just beside myself so is that could you and i know time is getting on here but could you give us um an idea of the, the new human that's starting to emerge. I feel we're at the very beginning of this process that's going to start to emerge over coming months and years. Can you give a little more of a, a picture of the new human? At the cellular level, things are changing. Your environment has changed. Uh, we won't go too much into toxins and so forth. However, there is a lot of um, imbalances and so forth. And therefore, the chemistry that your chemistry of the physical body has had to change. 
Now, there is still potentials for this to change quite radically and others to be more of an upgrade. The potential we are in at this very moment of time is most likely that the choosing of the souls, because really think, you know, the souls are really choosing what direction to go in at the higher level, not within the physical body, the higher level of the souls as a union are saying that the passage would be the easiest at the moment if it is an upgrade rather than a complete change. Now, this is good news for most people because this means that uh, uh, there will be a lot more ability within bodies to overcome whatever outside or internal forces happen of degradation, okay? One of the first main things that the human evolution is really looking at to do is to lessen degradation. We know about healing, transformation, blah, 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 blah. However, it is really the degradation that is the most uh, important thing. If we can slow down degradation, then there is more opportunity for bodies to be powerful, to be strong for longer to do these things. So this is something that we are starting to expect. We are starting to expect to see in many places around the world uh, and already in our pockets, we are seeing this of rather than uh, lifespans getting lower, they are getting a lot, lot higher and not just higher, you know, just survival, healthy, good, healthy, strong people getting, getting longer. Now, there's often talk and uh, thoughts about what that actually means about living longer, but this is more about a fundamental difference of evolution, of slowing down degradation. Now, if we can slow down degradation in ourselves, then we slow it down in the environment because as we have been saying, everything affects everything else. So if we can slow down degradation in the environment around us, again, you can imagine this will give space for far healthier, let us simply call it nature, agriculture, and so forth to be coming through. So what we are expecting to see is a lessening of degradation and a influx of more healthy, vibrant energy, um, a spontaneous clearance of toxins within sorrows and others. This is again coming from the informed water. Now, this sounds magical. We do not expect suddenly all the soil that has a lot of difficulty in your world to suddenly be vibrant and strong. But we are expecting, again, pockets, particularly areas where people are living very much in more of a sense of harmony. We do not mean a little bit of bickering here and there, you know, humans are humans, but far more in a harmonious collaborative state that the environment around will start uh, reflecting that with clearances of certain levels of density that there may have been there. These types of things is, is a, a, a slow progression, but something we're actually thinking is going to be uh, uh, very much viewed and uh, uh, in the research, you know, science research to start to report really quite soon to see these changes. Understand, yes? Yep, so you're seeing this in the coming months, really? Yes, yes. Fantastic. So even though it's gonna be coming years, we are not saying, oh, you know, you've got to sit and wait, sit and wait. I remember when we were talking, my dear, in your linear time a few years ago, and we said something about 2021. And uh, for most people, it would feel very far away. But now that we are in this year, even though there's so much influx and we are expecting everything we've been speaking of, that there could be a lot of uh, uh, physical and emotional uh, stimuli, polymagnetic forces, electromagnetic, blah, 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 photons and other. What we are also expecting to see is light coming through. What we mean by that is light of news. You know, can you believe it? We have discovered this. Can you see this? What we are learning from these soil samples. Can you believe these intelligent new species we are finding at the bottom of the ocean? Can you imagine um, bodies of water that have been known to be very difficult and polluted starting to become less so, particularly because Perhaps a new species of algae is yeah. suddenly there, which is eating it. Perhaps new levels of uh, uh, mushrooms and other such things that are in the same vicinity on the earth, eating out all these things. 
nature always provides the solution. It's just it does it quicker than human beings because it reacts very quickly with the stimuli that are coming in. So we are expecting a lot of good news situations. So do go looking for them because we also know that there is a lot of situations that we would feel of as bad news at this time because there is still everything so much in flux, which is pressuring a lot of emotions and there's a lot of reactionary situations happening, not only in local environment, but in global environment at this time. So hold firm, put your roots down into the ground, ingest the good water, align with the magnetic field, know what you are doing, choose, as you say, these lighter, brighter emotions because they are more comfortable to be in anyway, but also choose the paths that you will know will be helpful to yourself and to others. And then as we start to move through this, you'll actually start to see the fruits of your endeavors that you have been doing perhaps even for decades and decades now. Now is the time to start seeing the fruits and to not just think of them as a flash in the pan. Oh yes, that sounds good. That little bit of soil, you know, out in Ecuador. But what about here? If it is happening there, it is happening here. You know, whatever it may be, know that every piece of good news you are hearing, every little spark, something that sounds miraculous, expect it to grow. Remember, you are the universe. It is in your heart. You expect it, it will happen. And look for the miracles so that you can expect them more. And by expecting them more, you give more miracles to the world. Understand yeah. this? Yes. So final question, Zach, because I'm very aware of your time here and Janet's energy. Final question. So do you see 2025 as an easier year than 2024, moving more towards the light, towards miraculous developments, healings, etc.? Mm. Yes, but it is a workhorse, 2025. OK, imagine that you are building a new house and you have had all the headaches with the projects and the getting it going and clearing all the everything from before. And now you've got this blank canvas. Yeah. You've got a foundation. The building takes effort. Yeah. It also takes, you know, shifts and changes and plans. So 2025 is not a year for just sitting back on laurels or just waiting for things to happen. We expect it to be a busy year for a lot of people, but in a different energy rather than the energy of anxiety, the energy of excitement. Not the energy of survival, but the energy of growth. Not the energy of I'm going on a hamster wheel round and round, but I can see where I'm going now. And we see this in the collective as well as the individual. But it takes work and we do always, always, as we know, say everything that you do for yourself do it for others as well, and everything will get done a lot quicker. Understand, yes? Yeah, fab. we're not waiting, we're creating. Yeah, every intention I set before any major interaction, um, let this be for my highest good and the highest good of all, and the highest good of the earth. So you have been magnificent, <laughs> Zach. I am beyond excited about so many aspects of that conversation. It is a pleasure, my dear. Now is the time for these nuggets of gold to be coming out. And you got it, my dear. You hit me with it. <laughs> yeah, regarding uh, the divine intelligence. Of God. And, you know, they, there's so many things that my lips are dyed that I cannot divulge before a certain time because we have to get over a hurdle for it to happen. And now you got there. And, and now we can see it. And now you can look at things with a, a, a slightly different eye. And everybody can appreciate what they are really doing every time they have a glass of water. <laughs> Understand so me? exciting. We're really going to look at water very differently from now on. It's wonderful. Bless you. God bless you, Zach, Janet. And now Hazel's back with us too. Wow. Thanks. That was absolutely sensational, wasn't it? Oh, oh. And your excitement and your joy at, your, at Zach's response to your question just was so touching. It really was. Zach, do you have anything that you wish to add as a final, a final word? Remember, there is always a choice. And even when you are feeling like I would not have chosen to live right this moment, for some reason you are. So make it a good thing. 
allow your heart to lead you, but also know that the universe is in your heart. Do not uh, bring yourself down and say, well, everybody else, but not me. Now is not the time to be uh, so humble. Uh, humble is good, but there is a reflection, a deep, innate, more universal humblicity. <laughs> I make up another new word, universal humblicity, that actually says, yes, I am the universe. And what I do, what I think, how I act, how I feel matters. When you feel like that, you are already helping yourself and everybody else. Make it as easy as possible, but also knowing you are strong. You are here for a reason, and the reason is for betterment. So enjoy, my dear. Go good. Wow, Zach, thank that you was... so much. Yeah, beyond anything I'd 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 hope from this conversation. So I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. It will help so many people. Zach, Janet, Hazel so many people thank you. pleasure i shall leave now goodbye my dear goodbye goodbye bye bye zach god bless you and and god bless janet and you know all of her energy in in being able to do this i'm so so grateful to you and uh, i can't wait for this to be shared with more people <laughs> <laughs>